Well, this week earlier on, the Rugby World Cup 2023 referees were announced. Uh, let's have a look at the list. Uh, Marius Jonka, the TMO, and our very favorite, uh, Jakub Paper, makes the list. Gentlemen, let's have a look at that. I, th I think what's good, I mean, the growth of the game, we've got 12 referees. I mean, I think we'll take it 1995, there are 20 plus every nation had to supply a ref. And Nick, here we are now. This is the best of the best. You look, have a look at that list. Um, anybody that you're concerned about? No, not at all. I think those are very experienced referees. Freeze. I see there are five from the Southern Hemisphere and seven from the Northern Hemisphere. The World Cup's in the Northern Hemisphere, so, um, you know, that's uh, a, probably not favoritism, probably just that's the, the state of referees at the, at the moment. I think we've got four or five, maybe more, who I know Wayne Barnes was there last year, Nick Berry was there uh, for the last one, Andrew Brace was there, um, I think Angus Gardner was there. Uh, Paper was there. was there, Luke Pierce was there, and, and Yaka Paper, Matthew Reynolds. So there's a lot of experience. That's uh, it's probably uh, eight or nine who've, who've had World Cup experience. And the young guys coming through, Nick uh, uh, Amash Shuili. Shukeli, I think his name is, yeah, 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 refereed Georgia. us against, uh, against mm. Ireland. Uh, he gets the nod, and I must admit, he has refereed well, mm. so he deserves it. Um, and out of those, obviously, the, 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 they're all fighting to get a quarterfinal spot and also a semifinal spot, and then who will referee the final? It, looked, it could be Wayne Barnes. I think he's the most experienced at the moment. We hope and it's Wayne Barnes. That means South Africa's involved. Well, that'll be wonderful. <laughs> and England won't be involved, which will be even more wonderful. So, uh, so hopefully it'll be a South Africa-French final, for example, and then Wayne Barnes will have the opportunity to referee that game. So, so for me, uh, gentlemen, you know, we, we were involved in Rugby World Cup 1995. We're a great rugby nation, Nick. To have Yaku Paper, two, uh, two rugby walkers back to back, and nobody else coming through, it's a concern for me. And as a rugby man, and, and I say it's a concern, and I think we, we as, as supporters of the game, fans of the game, we need to take responsibility in how we treat referees. Mm. Sooner or later, Yaku Paper is going to call it. He's going to retire. And I think mm. it's sooner than we, we, we think. Mm. Where to from here? What should be done to make sure that we can get to an England where we, we have three representatives in the next Rugby World Cup? We might miss France, but in the U come USA time, we need at least three South African quality yeah. referees. Mm. Where are we lacking? What needs to be done? That's if you agree with me, by the way. <clears throat> well, but by, by not being on the World Cup, um, you know, in that in that final 12, it means that they don't they don't consider anyone in South Africa is, deserves to be there. Yako definitely deserves to be there. Um, but but we've got some good guys in the URC who've been refereeing and they're getting a lot of experience. We've got Amy Barrett, one of the best in uh, best women referees in the world, and um, and I think people like Yako van der Vesteisen is maturing. He's a much more uh, much firmer referee than he used to be when he kicked off. He's now takes far less nonsense from, from the players. And there are a couple of instances in the game that he refereed with uh, Free State against the Lions where he was very, very strict and, uh, you know, made his point and, and stuck to it. So I think they're all learning. They're all coming through. And uh, by the next World Cup, which is in Australia, is it, I think, uh, that we should have, we should have um, some more people come. Um, how old is Yaku? Would he be? Yeah, Yaku's, 40, yeah, Yaku's 43. done. 43. 43. Yeah. I mean, he looked like that at 30. So, yeah. And he looked like that at 53 because he hasn't got hair. So. <laughs> now, let me pose a question to you, John. I mean, you, you're quite involved in the game still with the Varsity Cup. What has been your experience with referees? Is there, is, is there a pipeline? Is there something coming through? There is. There is, but, you know, my opinion is that, you know, not a lot of them is actually putting in the work to really try and get to the next level quicker rather than later. Um, and, and I'll tell you why, because, you know, obviously you see uh, referees coming through Varsity Cup and then getting into Curry Cup and then kind of developing. Mm. And, and so at Varsity Cup level... A referee makes a mistake, you know, he gets an extra opportunity, but he doesn't, from a, from a coaching perspective, doesn't get better. You know, within the next two or three weeks, he keeps on making mistakes. Mm. Um, you know, and, and again, you know, you, it's, it's like a player, he needs time in the saddle to get better. But I almost feel that for a referee, he's got to take it personal. Um, and, I've, you know, when I was playing with, at, at the Cheetahs, I saw how Yaku Paper actually put in the effort to get better. You know, and, and for me, that was, uh, it was quite a... Uh, a nice thing to see because, again, you know, him taking the referee post really serious and putting in the hours to get better. Hence, he's, you know, there at the moment. But 
If you look back, I mean, we at, at the Varsity Cup level, the, you know, there has been a, a structure put in, put in place from uh, the, the SA Rugby management side. For example, so what they've now done, they've come to the coaches and asked if there's a player finishing up with Varsity oh, Cup, they like identify already and sort of walk, walk a path with them, for them. And I think that is because we've seen that there's not mm. enough quality referees <coughs> coming through. And so they mindset is that if a player has played the game, yeah. you know, you, you will be kind of almost feel the game, feel the game for the, or, or get the feel for the game quicker and just applying, you know, the rules. A guy like Rudy Page, for example, he's now done and he's one of those um, players that's been identified to hopefully, you know, get, get the path starting at club <laughs> level and then working himself through. So for me, I think that's brilliant. Uh, but I... I'm just a little bit disappointed that we don't have more referees, you know, at the World Cup because we should have, as a rugby nation, we should have. So, so I, I like that idea of saying, you know, not, not every rugby player will make it in terms of varsity cup, provincial, and to, to start now earmarking those, those players that are not going to go the next step up. One, they're educated, they love the game, they got a chance of, of, of becoming a Yaku yeah. and Andrea Watson. Your, your, your take, Swayze, in terms of the, the, the state of referees in SA? Yeah, just before I go to the state of refs in SA, I think just for the viewer out there, it's very important to know how it works, how they select these guys, the 12 names that we saw there. There's a guy called Joel Judge. He's in France. He's the convener of selectors to pick these guys, and he's assisted by Bryce Lawrence from New Zealand and then from Tony Spreadbury from, from England. That's Craig why, Jubeir was there. Sorry? Craig Jubeir was also there. Yeah, but now, the, the, the late, oh, no, at the moment. There's more on the panel, but these three, according to my sources, they, they, they dictate who's, who's doing what. So, so that's why there's four guys from England in this 12. They might be the best, but I'll come to that now. There's four guys from New Zealand and Australia, and we all know Bryce Lawrence. We've got, you know, the experience mm -hmm. we had in this country with him. So saying that, uh, the favoritism is definitely not with some of the sides. For example, the URC coaches, there's only three of them in that panel. Saying that as well, uh, you know, that, that Scotland, Italy and Wales got nothing. Not a single guy. So yeah. England has got four. I'm just coming back to the criteria. Yeah. And then want to talk from our point of view, from Mark Lawrence and from Rossi and the guys who control it in South Africa to them. They've done bloody well because they've got Yaku Paper up there. They've got Marius Jonker as a TMO. Uh, they've got, as Nick mentioned so well, uh, Amy Barrett. And then two sevens guys, uh, Mornay and, and, and AJ. Yeah. They top with the sevens. So our picture, being a small little country rugby, in their opinion, you're on the southern end of, of Africa running the World Cup, uh, we are not too shabby. My concern is more, and that's what I feel, of the, of the they had it in the past like that. If there's 20 teams in the Rugby World Cup and you rate it, Mackie and Nick, mm. 1 to 12, surely it's a, everyone's game. Let one guy be from each of these countries on merit. So then you involve everyone. I'm talking coaches, not TMOs and assistant refs, because they use the sevens guys more to develop the refs than, than the assistant refs. So don't look too much who's going as an assistant ref. We've got, don't, uh, there's none yeah. of us. There's none of us. Yeah. None of us. And, and that's, uh, that's the big thing. If AJ and Mornay develops well, they might be in the next pipeline going in. So I just wanted to give this background picture. For me, it's a distorted picture slightly. South Africa, you're doing well. Your coaching development is good. From Varsity Cup, Dion and Mark, right through to Rossi, who's in charge of all these things. Uh, as director of rugby. We're doing a great job. The problem is the spread at the World Cup is not, hmm. is not so well. Well, they say merit. So you, we can throw in 50 refs. They'll choose the best. They're saying the 12 best refs. <coughs> Who's choosing it? Yeah, I was on that committee, you know, from 2015 to 2019, and I know how the selection works. They have those three referees, then they had me as the coach's representative, and then they have someone from World Rugby on that committee. And what generally happens is the three referees discuss together who they want, and then they outvote uh, the coach's representative, which <laughs> happened to me. Exactly. So, so there is a lot of refereeing influence, and it's a very tight family. Mm, you know? yes. They don't like criticism from the outside, and they, they like to run it themselves. Mm. Um, you know, I just think you have periods where, where you have talented referees coming through, mm. and you have periods when, when guys haven't. And I think at the moment, someone like Rasta Rashavenga, who apparently has a few personal issues, it's a great, great pity that he's not mm. uh, still refereeing, yeah. because he had a, his, his trajectory yeah. was outstanding. He went from 
doing super rugby. He went from sevens to super rugby. He's an outstanding referee. And then, and then just f fell off the bus, you know. So, uh, you know, it would be nice to get him back in and him back onto the, coach, onto the refereeing panel again. Um, and, and if he has, uh, you know, personal issues that need to be remedied, then I think South African Rugby Union need to help him with that.